Now that we know what a hash is, we're going to look at hashing a password using the password hash function. And this is part of the password hashing API in PHP. So although this is fairly easy to just go ahead and use it, we'll actually be looking at some of the options we can supply so we can properly understand how this works. And we'll be looking at examples or options like how to provide a salt and the uh, algorithmic cost of actually generating the hash. So let's take a look at first what the function actually looks like. So I'll go ahead and open my text editor. So let's go ahead and just echo out the result of this. So before we were looking at examples like with MD5, so we can just provide something like MD5 and then a string in there. We're going to look at pretty much the same thing, but we're going to do password underscore hash. So this is a fun this is a function part of the P PHP password hashing API. So let's go ahead and provide a string in here. We'll just be using password as the as the string, and we'll go ahead and we'd probably expect to see this hash, but we will actually get this warning. And this says it expects at least two parameters, one given. Now, that other parameter that we need to pass to this is the algorithm that we actually want to use. So we've not provided this constant to this function, so we need to discuss which two at the moment we can use. So we've got two options, password default, oops, password default, and what this will do is it will take the default hashing algorithm that PHP uses, um, and this is subject to change over time. We'll talk about this in just a moment. The other one that we can use is mcrypt, and this is the mcrypt algorithm which uses the Blowfish cipher. So let's take a look at the two in action. So let's go back to password default, and we'll actually see what the hash actually looks like. So you can see it is a little bit more complicated than what you would expect to get from back from MD5. And also with the same string, when I go ahead and refresh, we actually get a different value each time. Now this is still at the same length of 60 characters, and we'll discuss the implications of that in a minute. So uh, we can see that when we refresh, we get a hash that looks like this. Let's go ahead and change over to bcrypt and see if this sort of changes significantly or not. Okay, so you can see that it hasn't really changed significantly and that's because we're actually using you know, the same algorithm here. Now we can tell which algorithm we're using by looking at the start of this actual hash. And this hash contains a lot of information about this that may not be obvious at first. Now, this image from the PHP documentation of the PHP manual shows us the different parts of this hash. And we can see here that we've got an algorithm identifier at the start. In this case, it's dollar two y dollar, and that's what we're using at the moment. We've also got the cost, which we'll talk about in a moment, the salt, which we'll also talk about, and the actual hashed password at the end here. So everything about the actual hash itself or the um, options for the hash, which is this, are stored within this hash, if you like, here. You can just, I guess you can just refer to this as a hash. So if you use password default, what's the difference? Well, let's go ahead and just take a look at password default. And we'll go ahead and we we'll use strlen to get the string length for this. And you can see that this is 60. So however many times I refresh, this is always 60. And that's just the, you know, that's just a nature of hashes, it will generate the same length. So what's the problem here? Well, basically, if you use password default, you're let you're sort of opening yourself up to changes when PHP is updated, and this algorithms changed. And that means that you should probably go ahead and store these uh, password values in a in a 255 character, which is recommended um, column in your database instead of just 60. Because obviously the last thing you want is to be truncating password hashes and not allowing people to sign in once they've registered. So we've looked at the fact that this is a uh, string length of 60. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and look at some of the options we can provide here. And we already know that we've got uh, our sort of hash, if you like, that's generated contains some of these options. So we'll go ahead and change these and talk about what we're changing and why maybe we shouldn't change some of them. So let's first of all look at the salt. Now, if you don't provide a salt to this function, it's automatically generated for you. However, we can go ahead and we can provide an array as the third 
parameter to this function and we can go ahead and it's an associative array with values based on what you want to change. So we'll first of all discuss the salt and we'll see how, how this actually works. So let's just bring this down a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, so we can go ahead and provide a, a salt ourselves. So there is no need to actually provide one for yourself. That's really, really important to understand with this. Um, you might be thinking, oh, you know, this isn't secure because I'm not providing a salt. I'm not storing a salt separately. Salts are stored within the hash. So we've seen this from this image. So there's no need to uh, provide your own salt. That's really, really important. And it can actually be worse if you do provide your own salt. So this is really, really great that it does generate a salt for you because it means that you don't need to store a salt in a separate database column in your database. You don't need to pull it out separately or construct queries to combine it before you go ahead and sign a user in. The password verify function takes all of the work out of this. So this, it will pick up the salt that's stored within this value and we'll be looking at that in the next video. So let's go ahead and provide a test salt. Let's just type test in there and we'll see what problems we, we see with this. It says provided salt is too short at four characters expecting 22. So the expected value of the salt is 22. So let's just do something bigger than 22. It will go ahead and truncate this for us, but we can now see that when we refresh, we've actually got this salt here provided uh, in, the, in here. Now, the reason it's at 22 is as you can see, this here it, it's a little bit misleading because we've got a dot here but this, the salt is always 22 characters this is 22 characters therefore anything after that is the hashed password so although you know there's no identifier to say this is the hash this is the hash pass uh, this is the salt this is the hash password uh, it's 22 characters so up to there is the salt we we know that because we can see we've entered a value ourselves but obviously in this case, um, it's not a good idea to provide your own salt. Now, why is it not a good idea to provide your own salt? Now, the PHP password hashing API is there for a reason, and it takes all of the um, sort of difficult security tasks, like generating a truly random, you know, salt, and then it, uh, you know, it does it for you. So, really, unless it's absolutely required, there's no need to go ahead and provide your own salt because you know, all the work's been done for you already. It securely generates this random salt. So you're better off letting the functionality that's been built specifically just to handle this for you, unless you can think of a scenario where you would need to provide a salt. So we've looked at salt now. Let's go ahead and look at the algorithmic cost. So the algorithm, if the algorithmic cost is an integer, and by default, this is 10. So although you can't see that it's 10, it's actually 10. Um, oh, actually, yeah, we can see this is 10 by this value here. So we know that this is the salt, this 10 value here. So here is 10. So we can go ahead and actually provide this in the options as well. Uh, just as a off, not off topic, but you can actually provide a salt and a cost in here as well if you absolutely needed to. Um, but let's go ahead and just talk about the cost. Now, it's by default as 10, so when I go ahead and refresh here, you know, it just sort of refreshes and regenerates a hash. Now, as we increase this value, um, you actually start to see, depending on your hardware, a slower page load time. You can see that, that 12 has been updated there as well. Now, all this cost is, is it's, the, is it's the expense that's used to actually generate this hash. So obviously, the, uh, the more you know, round it does or whatever, you get a stronger hash due to more hardware power generating something that's harder to crack. So taking this value up to something like 14, you can see that um, on my computer, there's a lot of hard, it's significantly longer to load. It, when I refresh, it takes a couple of seconds. So taking this value up to something like 14, you can see there's a much larger delay. Yes, that means a secure hash. However, do you really want to make your users wait around or cause too much load on your server? Um, if 10 is all that your hardware can handle, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it can just be tweaked, however. But 10 is obviously the default, and this should be absolutely fine. So the value that we've generated here is now good enough to go ahead and store within a database alongside all of the other user information you collect, so username, email, or whatever, you can go ahead and you can store this in a single 
column in your database, bearing in mind the length of the column depending on which algorithm you're using. As we've already said, it's probably best to just go ahead and use password bcrypt. You know that that's going to be 60 characters now always. And you can go ahead and increase the cost to however much you think your hardware can handle. So now I feel comfortable, I can go ahead and store this in the password field in my database table. And in the next video, we'll look at how to check this hash against a plain text value in the next uh, part. So that will then go ahead and just verify that against uh, a, a plain text value and tell us if the hash matches or not.